Good morning everybody. Today I want to talk to you further about neoclassical growth theory, but specifically to consider something called economic growth and steady state. Up until now we have been speaking about the production function, the investment requirement line, the savings function, and we spoke about something called steady state equilibrium. And in steady state equilibrium we said that there is no further increases in output per person and no further increases in capital stock per person in the steady state unless one of the parameters of the model, the savings rate, the depreciation rate of capital, or the population growth rate were to change. And that might have seemed quite weird because if this is a growth model, but output per person and capital per person aren't changing, where is the growth? To understand that in steady state there is still economic growth, let's go back to some of the definitions. So we know that Y is equal to total output. You can think of that as GDP. Change in Y over Y would then be our economic growth. And K is the capital stock. Change in K over K would be capital stock growth, capital stock growth, okay? So those are some of the definitions. We know that N is the population size, and if we were to take total output divided by the population size, that gives us output per person, or output per capita. That is the um, variable that we're measuring on the vertical axis of the neoclassical growth model diagram. And capital stock per person is total capital stock divided by the population size, and that's capital per person. So that's what we're measuring on the horizontal axis of the neoclassical growth model diagram. And what we have learned from that diagram is that in steady states, so in steady states, the change in output per person and the change in capital stock per person are both equal to zero. That's not to say that capital per person and output per person are zero. No, they're not. They're positive values. But once the steady state is reached, there is no further change in output per person and no further change in capital stock per person. And therefore, the output per, per, per person growth rates and the capital stock per person growth rates are equal to zero. What we now need to try to understand is that even though output per person and capital stock per person do not change in steady states, there is still output growth. And that's where we are, or what we are trying to explain in this short video. So to do that, I am going to flip over this page and consider the following. Let's say in time period one, we have our output per person, which is total GDP or total output divided by the population size. And let's say that total output was 1,000, the population size was 100, and that gave us output per person equal to 10. So that's specifically time period one. When time period two comes along, and remember, what we're talking about specifically is a steady state amount of output per person. So this 10, the value of output per person of 10, would be a steady state amount of output per person. When time period 2 comes along, if we are in steady state and none of the other parameters of the model have changed, there's been no change in the savings rate, or no change in the depreciation rates of capital, or no change in the population growth rates, then in time period 2, the value of output per person will still be 10. Because remember, in steady state, output per person and capital per person do not change. So if in time period 1, output per person is 10, then in time period 2, output per person must also be 10. So what we're trying to understand is in time period 2, our amount of output per person must still be equal to 10. Output per person is equal to y over n. 
But what we now need to ask ourselves is, well, what must happen to the values of total output and of the population size to ensure that output per person remains at a value of 10 in time period 2? The problem that we have is that output and the population size are not constant. Those values do change over time. We know, for example, that the population is growing at a rate of n. That's built into our model. We can assume a particular growth rate for this example in the population size. Let's say that that population growth rate is 10%. That means that in the second period, our population is no longer going to be 100. It's going to be 10% bigger than that, so it's going to be 110. What now becomes clear is that the numerator, our GDP or our total output, must also have increased into time period 2. Because if our total GDP had not increased, then the value of output per person would be lower than 10. And we know it can't be lower than 10 because in steady state, output per person remains constant. So in time period 1 and in time period 2, output per person would need to stay the same. So what must have happened to the numerator, to our GDP, to ensure that output per person remained the same from time period 1 to time period 2? Okay, I hope that you are processing, because what you should be realizing is that the numerator, GDP, must have grown at the same rate as the denominator. So if GDP grows at the same rate as the population size, that means that GDP must have grown by 10% at the same time that the population grew by 10%. A 10% growth in GDP would give us a total GDP of 1,100. And what we can then see is that the amount of, by which output grew was 10%, the amount by which the population grew was 10%, and even though total output grew by 10%, and even though to the total population grew by 10%, because total output and the population both grew at the same rate, output per person was able to stay constant between time period 1 and time period 2. What that therefore means is that in steady state, specifically in steady state, the output growth rate will be equal to the population growth rate. And in this case, for the purposes of this example, that was a growth rate of 10%. Note that in steady state, output per person stays the same, but that total output grows at the same rate as the population. This is a very important concept to remember because it applies even when there are changes in the savings rate or changes in the depreciation rate of capital, or changes in even in the population growth rate. The point is that if you want to know what the output growth rate is in steady state, the output growth rate in steady state is always equal to the population growth rate. It is that which allows the output per person in steady state to then remain constant going forward.